Welcome to the video solutions for day four of Barvember. Question one. Now, as we've mentioned on the previous days, question one is probably a question that you can see how to answer and say, well, I don't need bar modeling to do this. Well, these are the best questions to practice your bar modeling with questions that you know how to do the maths and you know how to get the answer. So use these questions to practice drawing your pictorial models and just check with the video solution that you end up with a similar looking picture. Okay, first thing that we should do when we look at a, one of these questions is how many bars will I need here? Now this is an interesting question because it's about one piece of ribbon but it's also about two pieces. So it's perfectly possible to create a bar model with one bar representing the ribbon or two bars representing the two pieces. Now the example I'm going to show here uses one bar, but please send, please, uh, send in to your teacher any examples that you use using two bars. And here's our first bar model element, just to remind ourselves that the bar represents a number or a part of a bar represents a number. And if we know that number, we write it in the bar. The question mark represents what we're trying to find out or solve. And that's the same in every bar modeling question. Do not forget your question mark. Hopefully we can see that this is a subtraction question in that the total length of our ribbon is 20. We know that part of it is 11. So to find the missing part, 20 minus 11. Okay, question two. We have a similar situation here as well. How many bars will I need? Now you could say, I'm going to use one bar to represent my 30 apples, or I'm going to have five bars, one for each child. I'm going to do this with one bar. Send in to your teacher any examples that you do with five. So there's my one bar, and my curly bracket indicates that all those 30, all those parts represent the 30 apples. Now, the question says that these are shared equally. So my five parts of this bar are equal parts. And that's always a big clue that we're going to have a multiplication or a division. There's our question mark again, because our question mark represents what we're trying to find out. We're being asked, how much do Amir and Alex have in total? So we've got a curly bracket covering two of our parts. So there we see, yes, we do have a division calculation because our 30 represents five equal parts so that each of those is six. We need two of those, so two lots of six, a multiplication problem. So in fact, it was a division and then a multiplication with our equal parts. Okay, question three. Start off as normal. How many bars will I need? Well, I think it's going to be three because we've got three children here. So let's see how we go. Now, what we're going to do here is to try and read the question one line at a time and see if we can transfer all the information into our model so that we only really need to read this long worded question just the once. So line one, 250 pounds shared between three children. So there are my three bars, my curly bracket saying that my 250 covers all of that. So. Have I included everything in that first line? Yes, I have. So we don't need to read that again. 
Danny receives £20 more than Emma, Esma. So Danny's bar is going to be bigger than Esma's. Bigger by how much? There's our double-headed arrow to indicate the difference. Notice how that arrow starts at the end of one bar and finishes at the end of the other bar. Have we included everything from this line? Yes, we have, so we don't need to read that again. Danny receives twice as much as Viona. Have we included everything? Yes, we have. We've split Danny's bar into two halves and made sure that Viona's bar is the same size as one of those. So we've included everything. How much does Danny receive? Well, we put our curly bracket in to say we're going to include those two parts of Danny's bar. There's our question mark. So we don't need to read that again. So look, we've, convert, we've transferred everything from our question into our picture model. Now, we've talked about equal parts before, and a very frequent issue in bar modelling is that we see that some of our parts are equal. In this instance, Danny's two parts and Fiona's part. So we've got three equal parts, but Esma's is not. So one of our challenges is, can we try and make this into a problem? just of equal parts, because if we can, then we should be able to convert this into a division or multiplication problem. Okay, and we normally do this by adding or subtracting part of one of the bars. So let's see what we do here. Well, we're going to focus on this 20 pounds, and we're going to add 20 pounds to Esma's bar, which means that we've added £20 to the total. But we can now, Esma's bar is the same as Danny's bar, so we can split that in half as well. And oh look, we now have five equal parts. And I'll let you look at the calculation progress from there. And question four, how many bars will I need? Well, I think I'm just going to need one, which is for these 120 bonfire lollies. So our first line is that we've sold 120 in the morning. In the afternoon, we sell a quarter of what's left. So this part here, we need to split into quarters, into four equal parts. Okay, so our bar is made up of one part, which is 120, and four equal parts to, to represent the quarter of what is remaining. Now... A real tip here is when you're doing this, please, please work in pencil because it might well be that you're going to have to slightly change the size of some of what you've drawn. And what we're going to see here is that we're going to do something to our 120 part and if we've drawn it differently, then our model might not look quite right. And I'll do a special video on this at the end of the week. So that's the quarter that we sell. And we're now told that Theo has half of the lollies he had at the start. So what he's got left is the same as what he started with. So the 120 and one quarter is the same as the three quarters that are remaining. So that means that the 120 and the 1 quarter represents 3 quarters, which means that the 120 
is two quarters. Now, if you'd drawn the bar differently, then you might need to get your rubber out, your pencil out, and just change that 120 so it really does look like two, um, two of these quarters, okay? So that was, that's what this tip is about, just being, being prepared to amend your model. Okay, so we've now got equal parts and we can see that the 120 represents two parts and I'll let you uh, follow the maths through from here. Okay, so that's the end of our solutions for today. I hope you're enjoying your bar modeling. If you've got any questions, do message your teacher and they will be happy to help you.